Hey everyone, Kevin from KenkelVintage.com. In this video, I wanna talk about mirroring toolpaths and some of the issues you might run into when you mirror those toolpaths. We'll look at some tools that you have to fix those issues and maybe see a tool or two along the way that you didn't know was in Fusion 360. So let's take a look at what I have going on. You can see that I have a left hand and a right hand version set up in these M-Lock 125 Slim Vices. And the goal is I want to program the part, the left-hand version, and then I want to mirror the tool pass over to the right-hand version. And we can see I've already have a setup created. And if I simulate this, we can watch what this setup is going to do. It's going to face the top of the part going in a climb direction. Then we're going to do a 3D adaptive to do the outside and the open pockets. I'll jump forward. A 2D contour to go around the outside and to finish up the, the floors and the walls skip forward again we're going to do a slotting tool path then we're going to see a spot drill a drill a tap and then it's going to be finished up with a chamfering tool path around the edges so that's the tool pathing of op one and what i want to do is i want to copy that to my second vice so i'm going to close and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mirror these tool paths so i'm going to shift click on the face and then while I hold on the shift button, I'm going to click on the very last tool path to select them all. And then I'm going to right click and choose add to new pattern. And when I do, I get some pattern types. I want to choose a pattern type of mirror pattern. And when we do a mirror pattern, we need some kind of a mirror plane, either a face or a plane that's been created that's halfway between the two objects. And so what I've done is I created a construction plane between these two faces. And when I turn on that construction plane, you can see it. And when I click on that plane and hit OK, it looks like we've kind of our, our work is done. So we can see that that toolpath fits perfectly the right hand version. And it looks like everything is good to go. So let's simulate this toolpath and see if that's the case. When I hit play, we're going to face the first one. It'll go face the second one because it's ordered by tool. Then it's gonna go do the adaptives and the contours on the first one. Now let's let it jump over and do the adaptive on the second one. And what you'll notice is that while it mirrored the tool path, it also mirrored the direction. So where it's doing a, a climb cut on the left-hand version, it's doing a conventional cut on the right-hand version, which is what I don't want. So this mirror tool path, while it looks pretty simple, isn't gonna give me the results exactly that I want. So I wanna go see if I can go and fix that. So let's close out of this. I'm going to expand out my pattern. And if you were just right click on the pattern, you're going to delete all the tool paths that are inside of that. So I'm going to shift select all these tool paths and I'm just going to drag them out of their pattern underneath the setup. And then I can right click on that pattern and delete it off. So the way we're going to get around this is we're going to shift select the tool paths. And then I'm going to right click and choose copy first. I'm gonna right click on the setup and say paste, and now we're gonna get an exact replica of all the tool paths. What I want to do with these tool paths is change their cutting direction from climb to conventional. So I'm gonna edit this face. Let's go to the passes tab, and I'm gonna choose the direction from climb to conventional and hit okay. I'll go to this adaptive and do the same thing. So edit, passes, climb to conventional. One that you maybe didn't know is in the software is we have these two 2D contours. I'm gonna right click on both of those at the same time and I'm gonna choose compare and edit from the right click menu. Now I see all the parameters inside the, the two options and I'm gonna choose sideways for sideways compensation type. Notice that they're both set to left but there's an edit all column. I'll just set this to be right conventional and hit okay. And now I change both of those tool paths at the same time. I don't have to worry about changing the slot or the drills and I don't have a lot of control to change the 2D chamfers right now. So I've reversed those directions. Now what I want to do, if we look at my setup one, if I edit this, if I did this right, my, I should have a one for my WCS, so I'm going to get a, a, a G54. What I want to do is highlight from the face down to the 2D chamfer, right click on that, and now I want to take these tool paths and add them to a new pattern. Under the pattern type, again, I'm going to choose mirror pattern and choose the plane. But what I want to make sure that I don't do with this pattern is keep the original. So when I uncheck the original, you're gonna see it's gonna drop off those copy and pasted uh, paths that we made. It's not gonna pattern that, it's just gonna pattern the output. And another nice trick you can do here is on the post process, I can override the WCS for this, and I'm gonna put in a number two here so that I could set my G54 on my first piece of stock in the vise 
in my G55 for my second piece of stock in the other vise. So I don't have to have the spacing and everything and the stock location, everything perfect. I can just go pick my location. And then I'll hit OK. And now we have the, the mirror that we want. You can see that it's doing the same thing. But when we set up and we click on the setup and simulate it, we're going to see that we might have another new little problem we're going to run into. And that is Fusion's going to face the first part. And now it goes and does the half inch adaptive, the half inch contours. It's going to go through, do the slot. It's going to do the spot drills, the drills, and the chamfer. And then it's going to come back to the facing operation and it's going to go back to that very first part or the, the part on the right hand side. I mean, and it's going to reduplicate all those operations. So we've got a lot of extra tool uh, changes in here and this isn't a very efficient method. So let's see if there's another tool that we can use to kind of fix this. If I click on my setup and I go to my setup dropdown, you'll see that there's something called a, uh, I want to create an NC program. And on my NC program, I'm looking at my personal cloud posts and I'm using a host next generation control here. I can give this some kind of a program name or number if I want to. And I'm going to go over to my operations type. Now you can see that Fusion has everything uh, posted between the patterns and it's also got reorder to minimize tool changes. So it's going to, you can see we have phase one and phase two. You can even see the work coordinate system offset. So you can see how it's going to post these out. And so now when I uh, go ahead and uh, hit OK, I can come up to my NC program that's going to be created and I can simulate this instead. And now when I hit play, what I'm going to see is it's first it's going to face the first one and then it's going to go over and face the second one. And if we jump ahead a few operations, we're going to see that now we're getting the climb cut that we wanted to, that we were getting the conventional cut before. So we were able to fairly easily take that mirror tool path, flip it, uh, re-mirror it, and then use the NC programs to get everything in order so that we can get an efficient use of our tool changes. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the workarounds you can do inside of mirroring tool paths inside of Fusion 360. So the next time you run into this, you don't have to program both parts individually and you can still get the results that you want. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Hopefully you guys found this one helpful and thank you for watching.